Hey folks, this is Noble Rambler, and welcome back to RimWorld. We've had, boy, quite a response to the last episode, episode one. I've got, uh, I've got a list now of something like 15 or 16 uh, people requesting to be uh, made a character in the game. So we're going to, I don't know how many will fit across the top of this. We'll see. Eventually we're looking at expanding into another colony, so we'll be able to split people up and, and have basically two soap operas going at once. But uh, that's a lot of episodes away from now. Um, lots and lots of comments. In fact, most comments I've had in an episode in a long time. So... I'll try to catch a few of those comments this time, but uh, for the most part, is everyone just kind of checking in and, and saying how excited they're going to, that they are for the series. Um, I want to check out the characters we do have right now. Otherwise, we'll kind of watch what's going on here. Oh, we got all the beds made. We do. Still got to take these down, though. We need to move these uh, these blocks. I could just let's see, Sean Tigo, what are you doing? You're cleaning rubble. All right. Can you by chance? haul these away that way in case we get to bedtime and and that hasn't been done at least that bed is functional now okay anyway um let's start over here at klaus we'll go that route and hopefully i can kind of no handy's working out over here and we'll talk about that i was going to actually do this all on pause and not build this yet but i guess we'll just talk about that when i get to it on my list it's not that critical anyway klaus Character. Do we start with character? I think that's where I want to start. Just kind of refresh my memory of what all the tabs are. This is new combat. As they go to battle now, it's going to give you kind of a dwarf fortress style blow by blow of what just happened. So it's going to be interesting to, to, to see that when, it, when we get there. But let's start with character. And... The game kicks out some backstories. I used Prepare Carefully, so I combed through the various backstories that seemed to fit the character that I was building for, for them, for the, the landing party. Otherwise, all the other characters that come into the game are going to be entirely random. I mean, really, really random. <laughs> There'll be some crazy backstories in there. Anyway, um, Klaus. Born to a family of traveling merchants, Klaus was mentored by his father in the ways of being a trader. He was often tasked with caring for the pack animals. Due to his nomadic lifestyle, he hunted and bartered for his food. So that experience gave him plus one to shooting, plus two to social, plus three to animals, but negative three to growing. They didn't do any gardening, they were nomadic. So that's the childhood story of Klaus. And I see we've got a, a fog setting in. We're at... Uh, noon right now 12 noon and 64 degrees so not that hot but fahrenheit so for those of you who don't use fahrenheit that's that's about what my house feels like in the winter time indoors with the furnace not turned up very high that's kind of cool um we were spring so the very beginning of spring and we're in something like temperate forest, so we should get close to 100 degrees. Pretty hot by the, the, the very dead of summer. Anyway, Klaus's adulthood story. Graduated from the Star Academy with honors and distinguished himself as an ace fighter pilot in three campaigns against more advanced aggressor cultures. However, after one vicious battle, he found himself stranded and his carrier ship destroyed. With nowhere to go, he entered his escape pod and prayed. Apparently he was found because he was the uh, communications officer for the, uh, the ship that crashed here. So he's just had a string of bad luck with ships. But that did give him plus three to shooting, plus two to melee, plus three to social. Gave him some medical experience, though didn't have any mining experience through all that. And a little bit more to intellectual. So that kind of rounds him out into something like this so he's really good at communicating that's really his main goal here as warden that uh, social is the is the uh, the biggest modifier and we're going to call shooting as as another one as well just to uh, uh, kind of round out the the idea of a marshal or or a sheriff now i got to pause here for a second i do have a note it's gonna be hard to just do this and let the game run because there's a lot of things i wanted to do at the same time so we'll, we'll get we got one character down um Boy, in the fog, it's kind of hard to see. Oh, we're over here. Oh, they are in a social time. Restrict. They're in this window right here. 
1500 about to come out of it so this gave them all a chance to get a little boost we are going for a walk which does what it allows the joy to kick up so by doing that this joy has been decreasing which has generally taken the mood down so by giving them a chance to walk around and later play chess or pool or other things that we'll be able to build for them then their joy goes up they're a little bit happier the mood increases which offsets the negative five to ugly environment and the negative three because eight without a table because you know how horrible it is to eat without a table feeling great though and in the very low expectations they don't expect much out of me so they're 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 enthusiastic that we even have you know a bed by now so <laughs> that's the new colony optimism as well we can do it yay 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 so i wanted to before we got too much further to set one of these with the the uh the good soil click away there's finally a way so right in there we've got the rich soil we are going to need parkas soon a 30 out of 60 grow days means that half the year is going to be cold so half the year is going to come up here real soon so i want to get a grow area that's got good soil into cotton i wasn't going to waste it on cotton this is all normal soil so this one's going to be strawberries we haven't started working on it yet we got cotton where we stuck one more in somewhere your cotton let's do that one and this one man this one as cotton i need to get as much cotton as i can because we need to start making parkas and uh toques you know wool hats to uh, keep us warm this winter and we're not gonna have as much time as we did in alpha 13 for that that map i'm gonna have to really get on that one early so cotton you're down there so two cottons that means i need one more strawberry just to just to have it and this is a lot of food here i'm not uh we, we could very well grow enough out of this if we can store it safely to not worry about having to grow food for the winter that would be great and rabbit's main job is just going to be growing for quite a while he'll eventually get around to uh, working with the animals working with the the uh retrievers wherever they're sienna there's one right there ian i think was the other He's here somewhere. A ham. Oh, ham. Okay. So Sienna and ham. I knew it was three letters. Anyway, let's grab a quick other field of or grow zone of strawberry. And we've got other places, right? With with soil, rich soil. Rich soil right there. Let's do let's do kind of an odd little thing right here. We were to do something kind of like well, like that, take you over to there. Whatever you keep clicking, it's just going to add it. So something like that. This is cotton or uh, strawberry. Strawberry doesn't need to be cooked. So it's a quick, easy food to not have to worry about having your, your stove up and running by then. So they can just come and munch on. And I think they get kind of happy eating strawberry, too, if I remember right. Now, you're a little darker, too. What are you? You're just soil. Just looks different than this. Maybe, what is this? That's soil. And that's soil. So, different quantity of grass is what's making it look that way. Okay. So, what else is on my list that needs to be done before I let these guys go? Um, hmm. Got the cotton done. Uh... I think we're okay now. All right. Let's grab another character. Let's move this way. Shantigo. Oh, let's see here. Let's just go back to Klaus a minute. So, that was his character. And we can see what he's capable of. Fast learner. So, and I, I got to pick all the traits for these guys. And I'll admit, I, I picked some pretty good traits on purpose. You know, they're going to be the leaders of their field, in a sense. Except for Klaus, these guys came together intentionally if you remember the storyline to go off and kind of break away from society and create an area that's just theirs and kind of conquer and, and control it so they gathered folks that had some good skills and good backgrounds already so that was intentional everything else from here on out is going to be random i gotta remember these guys are here and where are we now we're roaming back and forth through here these guys may venture out on their own at some point have to be aware of that so yeah the the traits are going to be good with these guys that's just the way that the story opens up 
so it'll get a little strange later. Anyway, Fast Learner gives him a global learning factor of a plus 75%. That's that's huge. Iron Will, so his mental break threshold. You know, it takes a while to finally get down to where he's going to break. Whereas for other folks, these lines could be clear up over here, and they'll be skirting it all the time. So, again, randomness based upon all the, the things that make up their character. And then kind. Klaus is a nice person. He has a tendency to brighten everyone else's day and never insults others. Cool. Anyway, so that's his character in a sense. Health. He's got a burn scar probably from that... that, that uh, back to it here. Um... After one vicious battle, he found himself stranded on it, and his carrier ship destroyed and, and jumped into his escape pod. So that was a rough time. So that's probably where the burn scar came from. Um, otherwise, everything else is fine. His manipulation is a little bit weakened because of the burn scar, but not by much. So he's fine there. Operations. Here's some, some of you, you know, just randomness here. Um, if you've never played Room World before, these are in a sense the the different operations that you can do in the game so when they lose a leg there is a way to peg leg them or eventually put in uh bionic legs and whatnot but we'll get into that many episodes from now just happen to see that that tab there character gear what klaus is wearing at the moment so this is more synth thread so um high-end clothing that that comes with the characters and afterwards we're gonna you know as characters come from other clans and tribes are going to be wearing a whole different kind of clothing they will pick up a few things on their own what's that symbol consume package survival meal so that's what he's carrying okay so they'll pick up a few things on their own is carrying it with them we can't control that they, they just their own willpower they do that i see we're running into nighttime pretty soon uh 7 p.m and then this is his sniper rifle the eye Anywhere in the game, any object in the game should have an eye for information. That will give you all the specs and all the stats of that that uh, that item. And then, based on what he has on him now, his gear. Here's his blunt rating, sharp, heat, electric, uh, insulation from, and, and what have you. And then, mass carried, comfortable temperature range. I don't know if that's his or based upon what he's wearing. Could be based on what he's wearing. If he wears a parka, this would probably go down to a much colder temperature. And then, what else do we have here? Social. His interactions with other people. He's doing really well with Handy right now. He's doing well with everybody. You know, probably from the kind trait. And he's had a deep talk with Rabbit recently and a nice chat with Tomislav. So it kind of keeps track of how they react with each other. And then when we do get into hunting and, and uh, combat, we'll see that over here. So that's the basics of, of all the characters. I'll go ahead and continue to run this on one speed while we're, while we're chatting. I've really done a good job of bringing stuff in over here. We've got to get rid of the rest of the trees over here soon. Um, and they could all kind of do that. Plant cut. If I were to take all these up to two, so that'd be a problem. Oops. I don't think so at this point. There's not a lot that's critical at the moment. Hauling and when all the hauling's finally done, what are they going to fall back onto is basically it. And twos are going to be it, although hunting of a queue of any will override these because it's to the left of. Um, there was a comment that came up in the, in the comments last episode about using these for ones and then their their main job as a two and then everything else threes and fours but still they're not gonna you know handy's not gonna get to this one until all these are satisfied so if she's a patient she'll just continue to stay a patient because it's left of that one over there so i don't think it's a too much of an issue there this has worked pretty well for me to set these as ones and then set their 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 main priority as ones although this right here is an exception i just wanted to get this one done you rarely ever have ones out over here. I just wanted to make that happen. I wanted to get this stuff out of the the uh, the elements, and I'm thinking everything's pretty much there. All the wood is gone. The components are gone. Yeah, we're in good shape here. Everything's in. And really, what's left is going to be hauling the wood out of this area as they as they clear this out. Well, speaking of clear out, if there's an order I didn't give um, to haul orders. Things. Let's get all of the stone out of this area. 
that's where all the gardens are going to be. So, to where? And to where is important. Eventually, it's down here because we're going to be cutting all that stuff up into stone blocks. Though I don't see using a whole lot of stone blocks. I mean, we're going to be we're going to spend a lot of our time in the mountain. I think. Interesting. Remind me in the comments um, the quality of the beauty quality of wood walls inside of here versus. I don't think we have smoothed out walls. That's a dwarf fortress thing, but I don't think it's a rim world thing. We have smooth floors, but no smooth walls. So a lot of times in, they'll, they'll consider, let's do this. I'll show you something. You can, this little head right here, toggle the environment display. It displays the beauty and room stats of the environment as would be, would be perceived by a character standing where the mouse is pointing. Someone standing right here looking at this wall is going to see a negative two in the beauty factor. Now, all the debris and rubble in here is a negative 20 right there. They're going, ew, that's ugly. So negative 2 for these walls versus the wooden walls we put over here. No, that's, I take it back, that's uh, a stone wall, and we don't own it. Is that why we're not seeing it? I'm curious. I didn't toggle these to be owned, because the more you own, the more the enemies throw at you. Let's claim that one. Now can I beauty that one? I cannot either. So these are zeros then. They're neutrals. Okay. So the wooden walls we put in over here. And they're neutrals as well. Okay. So these are zero versus these rough walls over here at negative two. So really what we're doing is we're, we're gaining two by building a wall inside of our of our mined out walls down in here. So when I'm building a a colony inside of a mountain I'll try to remember to go one too wide one, one extra wide all the way around so I can then line that with a wooden wall I was wondering if the stone wall would be better than the wood wall but I see now it isn't so the only thing the advantage that is not uh, fire it, it's fireproof the stone is so I'll turn that off so what I'm getting at is are we going to be doing a lot of, of uh, stone cutting a lot of creating blocks or not. I mean, this map's got so many trees. Till the alpha beaver comes and take them all. But um, do I want to haul all those stone blocks over here? What did I do? I cleared all those. This is the garden. Yeah. Okay. That was a. <laughs> That was a mistake. How do I cancel that? <laughs> we don't need to move all these stinking rocks. No, 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 no. You guys just leave them right there. We'll, we'll deal with those some other time. The I thought I was sitting right here when I did that. We need to move these rocks. All right. All that goes away. And that goes away. All right. So, and we have all these over here, but we're not building gardens over here. Nearest garden is there and there. Okay, so these rocks right here, it felt like it just got lighter. 4 a.m. Yeah, it did just get a little bit lighter. These rocks. Okay, so erase the last 10 minutes, and let's start again. Where do we want to put these rocks? And now the answer is a lot easier because there aren't that many. We're just going to dump them off to the side. But if you are going to be doing a lot of building with stone, if you're stuck outside, we're not, you know, you're not on a mountain map, and you've got to survive out here, then you probably want to put in stone buildings, in which case you want to store those rocks pretty close to where you're going to be converting them into stone blocks. But for us, let's just grab a generic dumping zone. We'll fine-tune this stuff later. And put them where? Somewhere where they're not going to be in the way. Which is where, really? I don't know. We're going to be crossing the river right here, so that's going to be a, a pathway. In fact, we may even mine this out a little bit to make it easier. Um, hmm. Okay, how about kind of like in there? It really lets me put it in the water? I would have thought that it would have canceled that. Interesting. So you can block up the water. I didn't know that. Okay. Now we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll play with that. That should be enough room to move these blocks over. The rocks over. Okay. So with that, how did we do here? Everybody, Rabbit, how good of a sleep did you get? 
You slept in the cold. Negative four. Eight without a table. Negative three. Mediocre barracks. Negative six. Disturbed sleep three times. Negative six. Mm hmm. He's thankfully got a really good disposition. It's going to take a while to, or take quite a bit to, to make him cranky. So, Tomislav, let's compare that. Rabbit, that spot right there is the same for Tomislav. Okay. Handy, same. Klaus moved down a little bit because he's got the, what was it, character kind? Iron willed, yeah, iron willed, so mental break threshold dropped. So that's why his lines right here where he breaks are further down than <laughs> Shantigo, who's just about there right now. He's urgently hungry. That, okay, that negative 14 is going to go away soon, which is going to bring this bar up over here. But his food is, is tanking right now. Otherwise, the negative 6 rebuffed by Handy. Okay, what happened there? Ah, he tried to woo Handy into a romance, and she rejected his advance, and he is all bummed out now. Negative five. Ugly environment, disturbed sleep, and slept in the cold. One of the first things we want to do is to uh, get them their own bedrooms. That's going to be important, get rid of a lot of things. We, and we need to get uh, temperatures figured out so that they're not sleeping in the hot or the cold. That's going to help things out quite a bit. Right now, he's in pretty rough shape. Let's just to make sure he doesn't go crazy on us. Let's give him an extra hour of joy and help him gain some of that back. Anyway, wow, they planted those strawberries like crazy. They really like their strawberries. Those are already done long before we even got back to this area because it's the closest one. A lot of what they do is the closest point from where they were standing when they were at the other one. So when they finish this strawberry, what's the next job? Well, that strawberry is. What's the next job closest? Well, it's that strawberry. So it's going to be rare to see them plant this one, then go over to plant that one, then go back and plant that one. It's The game's smart enough not to do that to you. Anyway, we have worked our way through Klaus. And I want to get to the rest of them. That's kind of the, the goal of this episode. Is there anything else to be doing yet uh, soon? And another thought that I had a little bit ago before I go too much further, you know, like I said, I'm just going to put the generic dumping stockpile in. Later, there's things we're not going to want here, like when you go hunting and you shoot animals, you want the animals to not be put in your dumping stockpile, but rather be put into a stockpile that's going to be close to wherever your kitchen's going to be, which is probably going to be next episode. But, you know, there's, there's a lot of fine-tuning to do. Right now, I'm just doing... The, the generic rough stuff. The later we're going to fine-tune everything. There's an autosave. All right, so we're having little conversations while we're working over here. Is that what, basically what we're doing right now? This is kind of done for now. We need to get power going, but I can't do power and everything else and get these things red. So that's probably next episode, too. Sean Tigo, character. He is our cook. That's where his biggest passion is. So why? Cave child was your childhood background. Shantigo grew up in a large and intricate cave complex that extended deep into a mountainside. He helped the adults maintain and improve the deep caves. He gave him plus three of construction and plus three of mining. So that's why he's interested in mining as well. It's kind of his, his backup profession when he's not cooking. And we're going to be doing a lot of mining. And as an adult, though, He's always gone overboard when it comes to food. He's always seeking new and exotic ingredients. His quest for ingredients has brought him into some close calls with local flora and fauna. So, yeah, heading into the jungle to find that rare whatever and messing with tigers or something. Cooking plus six, artistic plus two, crafting plus one. So here is uh, basically the skill level right now that Shantigo's at. Uh, psychically dull, so his mind is psychically out of tune with others. That way, that means he isn't affected by he isn't affected by psychic phenomena, which is something that happens in here. We get a drone that comes over, lets off a pulse, a certain frequency, and all the men will, will all of a sudden be extremely irritated all the time until it goes away. Just odd little little random things that happen here in Grim World. And neurotic. Shantigo likes to have things squared away. He will work harder than most to attain his, his state of affairs, but his nerves can get the better of him. That's probably why his, his, uh, his 
moods are a little bit more sensitive than the others. And then character, so that gives him a uh, global work speed of 20% more, but his mental break threshold is 8% higher. And then hard worker, uh, is a natural hard worker and will finish tasks faster than most, 20% bonus. Okay, um, are we good here still? I do want all of these taken down. Is the worst message you can get over here that says colonist is idle. I haven't seen much of that, but let's make sure that doesn't happen. Work, architect, orders, chop. Let's get all the trees out of here so that it isn't just rabbit doing that and someone else set to growing, but everybody else can get out here and do cutting. And I did make those twos for now, did I? I cut twos, yeah. So, which means we're no longer doing any hauling because hauling is the last two in all of their lists. Mm, let's get one person set up to do a lot of hauling while we're doing this. Who's not really needed right now? Don't really need the doctor that much right now, so let's hit your hauling to one. And there's no, there's no injuries at the moment. All right, so let's get on to Rabbit. And was there anything else that was important? Shantigo, health, we're great health-wise. Everybody's set for the best quality of medicine while we have some. Um, needs... We've kind of looked through this disturb uh, twice last night, which means that he was this. Um, uh, there, there's some, there's some, there's some loving going on over here. Okay, we might, we might have puppies soon. Anyway, um, that means that he was the second to the last one to go to bed. No, he was the third to the last, and two of the people came in afterwards and woke him up. That's why we need to get uh, people into their own. Uh, uh, Boy, the game just paused. Normally when there's a little hiccup and the game stops moving for a second, that's something spawning into the map. Though I didn't get a, a warning that something bad just happened. Whew, okay. Anyway. Um, yeah, I think we're kind of done there. You guys can read that. Hit pause if you want. His gear is going to be the same as everybody else except for a different rifle here and there. Social, that's important. We saw that one already. That's why he was low. Okay, so let's move on to Rabbit. Who's got just... He's doing really good talking with Handy. Everybody else is, is pretty good there. Klaus, probably going to be high for everybody. Neutral otherwise. Um, Rabbit's gear, normal. Needs, typical stuff. Yep, doing fine health no injuries and and a good health all the way around so character rabbit born on a medieval farm so all these people have different backgrounds they all come from different places they just happen to meet up at the time they decided to form a pact and and start this expedition medieval farm rabbit was tasked with caring for domestic animals he grew to love them over time or with time he learned to tame wild animals. He dreamed of one day meeting a thrumbo and taming it. That's a valid goal that we could have actually accomplished. We've never done that before because when you in the other game, other series, because when you go to tame a thrumbo, if you do it wrong, there is a good chance you will be taken down by it. If it if it uh, doesn't like your method of training but that gives him a plus four animal and plus two to growing um it takes away his ability to craft drugs which i don't understand why but that's not something we're gonna be doing here anyway so not a problem gardener so as an adult he moved from a deep medieval world to an industrial world so i guess he caught a, a freighter somewhere and, and landed someplace and on industrial worlds, wealth concentrates in the hands of those who own the factories and sell the goods. Rabbit worked at the mansion of one of such rich family, tending the lavish gardens as part of a team of servants. From there, he got all kinds of growing experience. That's why he's so high in growing, plus eight. But as a result, he got no experience in the other ones and kind of lost interest. So smithing, tailoring, crafting were all disabled. So that's why we've got slashers over here. Can't do any of these, but it's great at growing, great at working with animals, and he's good at shooting. So that's Rabbit's background. We've got two others to go through, and I've got another 15 or so minutes of this episode. How are we doing here? We've got no way to deal with meat, so there's no point doing any hunting right now. Um, we do have these wild hill roots around if we do want to use any herbal medicines and save our good stuff. 
which we came with what 50 medicine we're gonna make that last until we get um, communications up and going and and flag a, a trader an overhead orbiting trader coming by has to do some trading with them or possibly one of these other generating planet I guess I shouldn't have clicked that huh I wanted to show the world and I've got a hundred percent world coverage so it's gonna take a while so we're we gonna have to do that every episode every time I restart the game interesting now that I know that I'll try to remember to click that world icon before we uh, before we get there now we're dark here well we're at six in the evening and it's cloudy so I guess that's why otherwise if I click here does it change the light no that's the light of the world right there so the Sun's over on the other side right now so we're just rolling into our evening right now for this season be curious to see if six well 19 18 yeah so 7 p.m. in the you know dead of summer I, I would imagine we'll still be lit over here but anyway it's possible that factions that purple and yellow yellow here purple there and there may come rolling in to trade with us yeah, it's possible so we could get a caravan world that shows up I see it just kept rolling even though I was over there I'm gonna remember to pause it next time and these guys will work until work no restrict they'll work until 2200 that's when they're told to go to bed unless yeah, it's kind of nice to make that the point at which they do their uh, their socialize and kind of break away from work in the evening and spend some time together doing things and then go off and go to bed anyway I feel like I have half completed a dozen things. Let's get into Handy's background. So, was wooed by Klaus and rejected his advance. So, weren't you also wooed by Shantigo? Everybody wants Handy. Mm -hmm. Why? Because that's not it. There. Handy is beautiful. That's why. Uh -huh. Anyway, uh, over here, combat, nothing social. So everyone is wooing her, and she's breaking all their hearts. Um, this is typical. Needs kind of the same run. We need to get a table up here going here real soon. Um, in fact, that can even be sitting outside. <clears throat> yep, that'd be fine. Though it should be sitting with the food. That's where they're going to grab it. And they're only, gonna, only willing to walk so far before they give up and just sit on the ground and eat it and get that... that a chunk of spacecraft has fallen nearby. Boom. Quite a ways nearby. Ships are breaking up over overhead still. Or some of our ship is still up there. And gradually the orbit is decaying and the pieces are falling in. Anyway, let's do throw out a furniture. We've got a lot of choices of, of sizes of tables now. It used to be just the, the big three. No, it used to be... Boy... I want to say it was 2x4 before. Yeah, they're right there. 2x4 and a 2x2. Two two. So we've now got a 1x2, which is kind of interesting. Let's flip you around like that and another one right there. And then let's grab four dining chairs. One, two, three, four. Okay, that can be built tomorrow. And then they will no longer have the negative three all the, all the time from not eating or, uh, at a table. Anyway, you guys are going to do that. And let's get back to handy. So right there. All right. That's what's going on there. Um, rest is going to go up, which is going to move this over. And comfort. Is anybody comfortable? Good bed. A shoddy bed. Oh, he just woke everybody up. Shantigo. Uh, superior bed. Handy built the beds. And you see which one she claimed. <laughs> And then we've got a normal bed and a poor bed. So one thing you can do just to kind of remedy this without tearing it all apart. We've got lots of wood. Let's have her randomly just build six beds. It'll increase her work skill because as she does that, well, we'll go to character handy 
character as she does that uh, construction she's at 3184 out of 10,000 to hit her next level which would be level 10 so as she builds that that number goes up so give her more experience and then we can see which one of these that uh, uh, is better quality and then we can swap them out move these out of here move these in and guys let me know can we sell furniture yet that was talked about in 1516 i don't know if it was ever implemented or not you can certainly put it you know take this apart grab this one we could reinstall we can uninstall it and it'll be taken and moved into storage is there any reason to save it far last i heard there was not you may as well just break it down and get the wood back or save it and then use it in your prison and your hospital and other things so let me know if, if you know with certainty that we can sell these if we can't then we'll go ahead and break them down again you know there's no point in saving a shoddy one if it's not worth the space it's going to be sitting in anyway i think i can that gives handy some work to do tomorrow and there's still there's no hauling left so that's not the garden there's the hauling okay i am always going to confuse this area with this area until we start doing something that really distinguishes it like getting our our solar panels going things like that again that's all next episode but something for these guys to do when they wake up um let's do it this way klaus where are you you're is that the same order they were in I guess so. So Klaus is primarily wardening, otherwise he is hunting. He's growing. So everyone can grow except Tomislav, and he is set for hauling. And we still have a little bit, no, not much, not much though. A little bit of growing left to do. Wow, we're almost there. Which means next episode we're going to actually be able to do something. All the basics will be done. All right, let's get Handy done. Character. What is Handy's background? Uh, childhood was a farmhand. And he was born on a farm on a smaller colony world. Everything was taken care of by the few members of the farm, including Handy. This helped her build independence, spirit, and well-rounded character. Gave her plus two to melee, plus two to construction, plus four to growing, but minus two to intellectual. And then as an adult, she was an expert handyman. So worked as a traveling engineer. She fixed things ranging from a simple communication array to the intricate software harness in the ship's AI metacore. Nothing was beyond repair for her. Gave her plus seven construction, plus three crafting, and plus four intellectual. So rounds out her skills right here. She's pretty much in charge of building, which well, she does have some fallback to mining, which is going to be helpful because there'll be quite a bit of time where they're going to do not much more than mining building the the surrounding wall around the room and then hauling everything back out which means we are going to need craft uh, get uh, stone crafting going just to do something with all the stone that's going to come out of here not every space that is mined is going to produce a block though so sometimes it just leaves a void it just turns to rubble and leaves a mess like this speaking of let's set up a little more mining here there's something else for them to be doing orders mining let's Looks like we're too wide in there, we're to there. You can kind of see there's a little bit right there, but there's nothing right here. There is something right there though, so this may go back a little bit further too. And there are mods out there that uh, you could click this and it will automatically find the rest of the vein. You don't have to make these guesses. But I'm not gonna run mods in this series, at least if I do, it's gonna be very few. I tend to play a game built the way that it was designed to be played. I, I enjoy, you know they put a lot of work into this game let's let's do let's play it the way that it was meant to be done that's that's my philosophy that's the way i do it um okay that's enough there they all have something to do we're eating without a table again but i'm sure she's going to dive into her first construction project yep right there anyway we've got Tomislav, who is our doctor and his background Tomislav was born the child of two doctors in a small colony. Because of his parents, he was always interested in science and medicine. Never really got along with other children, and as a result, became withdrawn and unsociable. So negative two to social, but plus three to medicine, minus two to, no, plus two to intellectual. So as a adult, 
he became a ship starship doctor. As a doctor on a starship, he was a brilliant surgeon and dabbled in research of his own. However, he was quite reclusive and never had the best bedside manner. <laughs> so, negative two to melee and negative two to social, but plus eight to medicine. So you kinda, in order to really boom in one field, you have to take some negatives somewhere else. It's kind of the general practice of these backstories. So plus five to intellectual as well. So that gives him a strong research ability, which is gonna be his fallback. Once we get to researching, he'll spend most of his time there unless there is an injury. Otherwise, he's well-rounded enough to be able to jump in and help out until these other things happen. And let's see, did we do Handy's? We didn't. Beautiful. Handy is exceptionally beautiful with an exotic yet familiar facial structure and an arresting gaze. People are attracted to her before she even opens her mouth. Jogger. Always moves with a sense of urgency, so much so that others often fail to keep up. Move speed plus 0.4. And industrious, so easy time staying on task and focus. So global work speed plus 35. Did I get rabbits? I didn't. Rabbit has a green thumb, which also adds to his growing there. Um, passion for gardening gets a mood bonus for every plant that he sows, which happens, I think, with all of the the uh, burning passions. Yeah, learns 150% faster and a joy gain times two when he's doing it. So someone who is in a bad mood, go set them to work and they'll, uh, they'll, have a, they'll have a ball doing it. We get a joy gain of, I guess, if this is two times, then basically one time for a, a uh, for an interested passion. Um, hard worker, so gives them a global work speed bonus and a careful shooter. Rabbit takes, aim, takes more time to aim when shooting. He shoots less often than others, but with more accuracy. So if we need somebody to do some sniping, he's probably the one to do it. Klaus didn't have that, that quality, so um, although Klaus, by not having that quality, he's going to shoot more often, which means he's going to gain, he's going to skill up faster than Rabbit. But Rabbit is going to be more accurate. So maybe Rabbit 7 is going to be equal to perhaps uh, Klaus's nine or something like that in, in uh, accuracy. We'll be able to look at accuracy later. It's all, uh, where is that? I'm trying to remember how that worked. Well, we'll get into that later. It's here somewhere. Accuracy of the weapon? Maybe that's what it is. So his, if I right click there, no, if I go to gear and do this. So accuracy here. I don't think that's just the weapon. It might be his influence on the weapon, but you guys can remind me how that works. It's been a long time since I've really looked at that. But back to Tomislav, we haven't gone through his traits. Hard worker, so plus 20. Cross the file. Tomislav feels limited in his feeble human body. He often dreams of going bionic. So he wants to have prosthetics. Others will be a prosthophobe and will fear having prosthetics. And in RimWorld, it's not that uncommon to get a body part shot off. I try to keep it down to just toes and fingers, but every once in a while something goes really wrong. And super immune. Tomislav has a natural, powerful immune system. He will gain immunity much faster than a normal person would and can survive illnesses that would kill others. So immunity gain speed of 30%. I threw that in there because of his high research, his high medicine, and his um, dabbled in research on his own. I'm going to say he kind of created a little potion or concoction that got his immune system boosted. But that's kind of rounding out the characters. I, I think I have done everything, right? As far as getting into all of these, I don't know that I got into, I didn't, into health. So health for Rabbit is fine, for Handy is fine. Though with Tomislav, I threw in a bionic arm thinking that his background may have called for something like that at one point. Just because he is a prosthophile um, character, which means he's yearning to do that. So he probably just did it on his own, that mad scientist uh, streak that's in him. So with that, let me look down at my notes and see what I was supposed to do along with all this but didn't because I know we're running out of time here. Uh, character description, uh, descriptions, move cotton back. Um, a little comment for the series in general. For the comment section, do keep the language clean. You know, I 
I've got a policy on my channel for Noble Rambler that uh, if there's cussing in there, I just delete the comment. I want to keep a family-friendly channel here. So even what normally isn't taken as super offensive, I've got to filter that blocks all of it. So, you know, just kind of kind of keep it clean. If you were talking to your child or your grandchild, what words would you use? That's what I want on here because I want you guys to be able to have your kids with you watching this with you. And so going through the comments, I don't want to go, oh, well, let's, let's skip over that one. Whoa, I can't believe they said that. So, you know, comments, keep them clean. Or they, if, if you write a comment and it doesn't show up, it's because my filter caught it. And that's probably what, what's going on there. Um, Carrie wrote in with lots of tips to uh to help me out here some of it's just because i hadn't implemented it yet but they're all good tips um one thing she mentioned is that building a let's go to orders and mine you've got she said an 11 by 11 um maximum before the roof will collapse so don't touch the 12. um i haven't verified that i'm going to assume that that's correct so we'll i tend to stick to 10 by 10 anyway that just makes sure that that uh, i'm not getting close to that edge although there may be times that i'll sneak out an edge so i can drop in a wooden wall here inside the mountain and surround us with a with an interior wall that will help their beauty and she also mentioned that if you hold shift you can add orders i've heard of this it was in the uh, the change notes but i didn't actually do it so i didn't get to see it happen let's see there let's try this let's pause Tomislav, i want you to head over and did you guys clean up all... No, you didn't. You're over here. Okay. I want you to equip... No, I want you to haul the wood. Now, if I hold shift now, what does it do? Let's haul wood. Oh, there it is. He'll do this one, then he'll do that one, then he'll do this one, and then he'll do that one. Oh, cool. I don't think that's been in any other version of this game. I think that is new to 18. I may be wrong, but it's, I don't remember reading it in any of the change notes until just recently. So I think that's an 18 thing. That is nice. You know how many times I have had, okay, let's do this one, then I'll wait for you to get done. So, okay, good, he's done. Let's let's tell him to do this one now. Ooh, I like that. And then what else here? Natalia wrote in, and let's see, the run symbol. There was a funny situation that happened in our Alpha 13 playthrough where I think the character was Eric, if I remember right, that all of our characters here, we can choose whether to, uh, how they're going to react when they come into a bad situation. We can, and I think it can be done from, is it a sign? Yeah, right over here, as well as doing it from here. So you can have them flee when they're in a bad situation, meaning something attacks them, some, you know, the an enemy crashes down right in front of them and surprises them. They can flee or grizzly bear charges, whatever. Or you can have them ignore it and just continue on like nothing's happened. Or you can have them attack it. And I have everybody intentionally set to flee because it could be, in his case, a turtle had gone manhunter, something, you know, a wild animal. Or you'll get a. a um, a situation that that shows up randomly a squirrel has gone mad you know think of a squirrel with rabies that just wants to attack anything around it and it's called manhunter and it'll charge the map and try to find that first person and then just just start biting them biting their ankles and i think it was a turtle if i remember right that had gone crazy and he was near it or he had shot it and it went into turtle revenge and said uh -uh, I've, I've had it with this i'm taking you down and so he starts fleeing because we're programmed to flee from a surprising situation and i'm seeing berries right there 88 percent grown there's there's food um harvest so it was kind of funny in the comments and watching it that Eric is running from this crazed turtle that's just barely crawling down the map, but he is fleeing away. I think it was Eric, and he later wrote, I, was, I wasn't running, I was getting into a superior location so that I could snipe it. But, you know, switching this over to attack would cause them to just immediately turn and draw their weapon and start attacking. But sometimes it isn't a turtle, sometimes it's a grizzly. Sometimes it's something else that you don't want them while I'm over here reading the character description and not recognizing that something horrible is happening over here. I'm, I'm, I'm zoned in over here reading what you know shooting is all about, and they're dying over there. So I prefer to have them all flee. 
then I can pause the game, go over, see what's going on, and say, okay, you can handle that. Let's let's send you back in there. But that's that's what that's all about. Otherwise, I think that covers everything on this page of notes. Yeah. So thank you guys for all the, the thumbs ups. That that's really appreciated. And everybody who's shown interest in the series and this long list. You know, these first three or four episodes are gonna be running really slow because there's so much to do. Oh, it's nice that this is all automatically forbidden. Just notice that. They eat this, and it gives them a mood boost and gives them lots of nutrients, just like these guys eating them. This is their food. You don't want this to automatically come by default as unforbidden because they might get hungry and just roam up on their own and decide to eat some and die. So that's why the game automatically forbids so many things and you have to manually unforbid. It's because if it's available, they just might get an order to go halfway across the map and you know go and get them some of that. And that can be bad. Anyway, I think I have rambled on enough here and, and given you guys who don't know the game enough background to really get a sense of what's going on here now. And next thing I want to do is get power going. And I want to set up some temporary housing to give them all some bedrooms. We need to get, you know, something here has got to be set up as a quick prison for our first prisoner, of whoever attacks us first or what have you. And we need to get some food started up. We need to get food production going. We've got so many things we've got to do. So if you think of it, you know, if, if it's you know, if it's in your on your mind to uh, oh, we got this to deal with too. Uh, on your mind as a, a list of of things that you do at the very beginning. Go ahead and you know shoot that into a a comment as a reminder. We'll get as many of those done next time as we can. But um, all of these for we got good, poor, normal, poor, shoddy. And normal. So we'll grab the two normals and replace the the uh, the shoddy and the poor, and get better beds in here, and we'll tear the rest of them down. But that's all for next time, because I've gone along again. This has been Noble Rambler. I'm gonna save it right there as a reminder, and um, I'll catch you next time, folks. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.